how much smarter does the power grid have to be to accommodate some of the you know, energy storage technologies or distributed solar energy? Uh, right now, it doesn't have to be a lot smarter in order to be able to solve some of the problems that, that Nick just mentioned. We're dealing with, a, with, with four major clients right now that have put in a whole bunch of solar. And if, if you don't size the solar property properly, you can create massive voltage problems on your campus, big university campuses. That's one. Number two, you have customers that are net metering. They've put on solar. And so at the middle of the day, their load drops and they're net metering their solar. At the end of the day, when the sun stops shining, their load shoots back to the grid, right? So not only are they caught, is that very, very expensive, but that means that for every, for every ton of carbon they think they're saving by taking solar off the grid, they're actually adding one or two tons of carbon because he has to build a peaker plant in order to be ready for when their load shoots back to the grid. So the first level of smart is simply controlling your demand using energy storage so it has both a, a, a salutary effect on your, on your costs but also, and on the environment, but also it allows the distribution planners to not have to build that extra redundant layer. That's not, that doesn't take a lot of smart, so that's just a smart deployment. Let me put a little more pressure on, on Nick and the utilities on where the grid needs to be, because it's, it's, it's decent right now. It works well, it is an impressive machine, and we're not, I can't forecast a future without it, but it does need to get smarter, it needs to be more dynamic, it needs to have more bi-directional control, we need to have better demand response and better interaction. We've got the biggest connected battery in the world is the US building stock with a lot of thermal inertia in it. We don't use it, we don't right. manage it, and so until, every, until devices are IP addressable and networked and really used in a way that's more dynamic, we're not there yet. So I think Susan's right that you can do things today that are smart but it can and should continue to improve. But you know, the network is a very, you know, we're a network focused company and you know, the concept of living without the network and being off on your own with your solar and your battery storage is, I think uh, somebody, Alex, yesterday said it was an intellectually lazy uh, <laughs> argument. You, you're, not going to, you're not gonna be like a cell phone because a cell phone doesn't operate by itself. Cell phone is part of a network and it's a function of how many other users are on that network that makes it more valuable. And so I think the network matters, the network needs to improve. It can get better, but it's absolutely key to have a dynamic network that enables, you know, there are two things. There's a strategic discussion and a tactical discussion. The strategic piece should be how robust and dynamic can and should the network be and what are the market signals on that network? You know, you know it's not just energy, but it's capacity and reliability. And the tactical piece is now what do I build? What do I do? Where do you put storage? Where do you put all these pieces? but you need to solve that strategic piece, piece first. And it's, we got a good start is the good news, but we've got a ways to go. You know, so, your, your pressure is, is, is um, I, I think you probably gave us a gift to say it was decent because um, there is a long way to go in terms of um, the accessibility of, of stored energy um, mm -hmm. in this largest machine on earth. And, and data analytics uh, are a huge part of that, but also components that, that really focus on um, optimization of the grid on a real-time basis, whether it's integrated volt bar control or those kinds of applications. And, and, and you're just now getting to the point with the ability, I mean, you all uh, deal with a lot of data at any particular time, um, and for your, the introduction of the partnerships that exist between technology providers and the utilities, I think, can be a really, really strong catalyst for um, achieving these objectives much quicker than any other any other way. And I, and, and to me, when I look at what you've what, what what you're talking about here, is is if if we're able to focus on the bi-directional flow of power and energy, and also the bi-directional flow of data uh, to support the interoperability and efficiency of uh, driving efficiency in that, that's gonna be a huge, huge positive for the entire grid and actually for the emission reductions in the US and for the resiliency and reliability of the grid. Quality of the grid. Quality of the grid.